a great forecast makes for a great 4th of July. And while the pandemic may have put a halt on traditional 4th of July activities last year, millions are expected to hit the water. Gorgeous weather this year. So joining us this morning with some tips on boating and water safety is Jim Emmons, executive director of the Water Sports Foundation. Good morning, Jim. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Of course. So 4th of July, so many people are excited about getting outside, enjoying all of the great weather that is going to be here in West Michigan. So what are the main tips that you would say people, you know, need to know? What are the biggest mistakes that people make over a popular weekend like this out on the water? Well, when it comes to boating, you know, boating and watching fireworks can be a great time. And uh, what we like to say is you, you need to file a plan with yourself. What, what, do you, what are your plans going to be to get there safely and to get back safely? And you have to realize that, you know, once the fireworks have concluded, it's going to be dark. Uh, nothing really good happens at dark on a boat. So I would say that if you're, if you're going to be uh, out watching fireworks on a boat, um, to be sure that you wrap back or you, you idle back to the, to the dock so that you don't uh, get up on plane and go too fast. The biggest problem is people go too fast and the collisions occur and uh, we end up with accidents after that. So it's, it's just not worth trying to be the first person back to the dock and get your boat out of the water first. It's, it's better just to stay safe and go at a slow pace. Make sure all the folks on the boat are on lookout. You want everyone looking out to make sure that there are no other boaters in your path. And um, always wear your, your Coast Guard approved life jackets, especially at night, and um, just be prepared. Yeah, for sure. I think having a plan is so important and you can kind of dive into that. But I have one specific question. When people are going out on the water, I think a popular thing is, you know, going out to one of those group parties, rafting up along one another, staying out all day and through the night. What are some of the best ways to attend one of those ra raft ups in a safe way to avoid, you know, any dangerous situation? Well, you're right. That is one of the funnest ways to boat with a group of friends to wrap up together. Uh, we just like to remind people to stay out of the channel, stay out of the, uh, the you know, the, the, Mar the Mariner Passway so that people can get through and get by. Um, a lot of times these wrapped ups occur in places where uh, commercial vessels can't get through. So that's the first thing. The second thing is when you do this, you need to do this carefully and methodically. And uh, make sure that you've got all your uh, passengers hands and feet inside the boat. Everyone should be seated in a in a manufacturer supplied seat um, pulling up against uh, another group of boats. You, you know, it's easy to get your fingers or your arm pinched. And uh, that's how a lot of accidents occur. But once you get there, you want to secure your boat safely with your fenders out and um, make sure you're, you're tied off and, and and no one's in the water. You should never have your engine running when anyone's in the water. Uh, that's a that's a big no-no because of the danger for propeller strikes. So yeah. um, and then departing from a wrapped up is the same same steps backwards. Uh, you just got to make sure you do things carefully, slowly. Uh, think them out uh, again. Can't stress enough that you know making sure no one's in the water is number one. Yeah, that, those are some great tips and advice, Jim. Do you have any other advice for people or, you know, if people do find themselves in a scary or um, dangerous situation, how should people react? Well, if you're in a dangerous situation and uh, need help, you should use your cell phone and dial 911 or you could use your VHF radio and use channel 16, the, the Coast Guard's hailing uh, channel. But uh, um, the, the best thing is to avoid those situations to begin with. And if, with a good plan, you know, being prepared by uh, making sure everyone has properly fitted life jackets uh, and that they're wearing those U.S. Coast Guard approved life jackets. Um, today's life jackets are so much more comfortable than they were years ago with new lightweight inflatables, suspender styles that just hang over your shoulders or a, even a belt pack. It looks just like a belt pack, fanny pack type device. Uh, the minute you fall in the water, they inflate and you're, you're uh, able to slip the ring over your head and you're, and you're saved. So life jackets are important. Another big thing is the engine cutoff switch. The captain should always be wearing the engine cutoff switch. It's a, a new law that went into effect uh, April 1st this year, a uh, federal law that uh, boats that are 26 feet and less, including personal watercraft, are required to have an engine cutoff device. And if the captain or our helmsman should be uh, dislodged from the helm for some reason, unknown reason, 
the boat will shut down and, and we won't have a, a runaway boat, which is it can be a bad situation. Yeah, Jim, so many great tips. And we're going to have all of these posted at Fox 17 online as well, if maybe you jumped in in, this, uh, in the middle of this interview. But we do appreciate all of the advice. I'm sure it's going to help a lot of people this weekend. Well, we thank you very much. Hoping everyone has a happy and safe 4th of July. Yeah, thank you again.